Welcome to the Two Acre Homestead Podcast. We're your host, Lisa. And Kevin. And on today's episode, we are talking all about getting off of the food system, starting with meat and dairy. Welcome to the Two Acre Homestead. Come along with us on our journey from a small suburban homestead lifestyle to our new lifestyle homesteading in the rural countryside of Southern Arizona. We'll share with you our tips, tricks, successes, and failures from both our past suburban lifestyle to our new rural lifestyle, all All on on the the Two Acre Acre Homestead. Homestead. Welcome back to season seven of the Two Acre Homestead. How does it feel, Kevin? Seven? Yep. Wow. (laughs) Season seven. We are super excited to have you guys with us today. The year that was, 2023, is now behind us. Isn't that just amazing? Where'd it go? I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Although I have to say, I really didn't feel like this year flew by like other years. I, I don't know why, but... We had things that happened. You know, it's one of those. Yeah, but it didn't fly by to me. Right. Yeah. So, but it's still crazy to look back because I remember this time last year saying, wow, it's going to be 2023. That sounds weird. It always sounds weird. Mm -hmm. And then you get used to it, you know? Yeah. So welcome back. We hope that you all are safe and had a wonderful time in November and December. And now we are back. You know, as homesteaders, we never really take a break. (laughs) doesn't matter what's going on, what vacation, what holiday. It just doesn't matter what's going on. But um, yeah, it's it's good to be back in the saddle. So what has been going on in your neck of the woods? I survived the (laughs) in-laws. Yes, my family has been here for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, several days. Um, I threatened ahead of time that I was going to stay in the shop half the time. Yeah. I guess I didn't as much. As yeah. I, no, actually, I didn't really. Yeah, you and my brother-in-law threatened to be outside all the time. But, you know, it went well. It did. It, I Well, I didn't have a problem. <laughs> yeah. What else has been going on in your neck of the woods? Um, yeah, it took, I mean, I had taken a break from some major projects. That was one of the things when, especially when my brother-in-law was here, it's good to have his help really appreciate it all the time. Um, didn't even really ask for his help just cause I was tired and just wanted to take a break from that. Mm-hmm. So, but we have some things that we're going to be planning and, um, Speaking of breaks, as we, as there's a break for our listeners from our podcast being published, mm-hmm. we're actually recording, so that's what's you know going on too. So mm-hmm. never, never much rest. No, we're right? always working on new content. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're super excited for this season. This is going to be an excellent season. Yeah, I think um, there's some interviews you're working on lining mm-hmm. up, right? Yeah. And, um, but before we get too much into that, what is new in your neck of the woods? You know, this is for me a quieter and slower time on the homestead, thankfully. Um, I am currently cleaning out some of the things in our freezers. So that means I'm making a lot of broth, um, bone broth, everything, turkey broth, um, chicken broth, meat stock, you name it, I'm making any kind of broth because we are deep into soup season at this point. And quite frankly, I don't want to see another turkey, ham, or any other sort of big roast or big meat at this particular point in time. All I want is soup and we are knee deep in soup season. So I'm very grateful for that. I think part of that was because we had literally just processed uh, a few more chickens and turkeys. Yeah. And sometimes 
that's why you desire a break from that, right? Like the day you process yeah. chickens or turkeys, you, you want to eat beef, eat. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which exactly. is fine. Exactly. If you process a pig, you don't want to eat anything pork. Yeah, like you I want just, to eat chicken. You know, I literally yeah. just had my hand in yeah. warm. <laughs> okay, warm, let's stop. Anyway. Let's not gross Poultry out. Poultry guts, can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. If you're listening to this podcast and you're an aspiring homesteader or you are a homesteader, it really shouldn't gross you out. No, no. But, yeah. But I have to say, though, I am behind on a couple of key things for the season and that is I'm behind on making my fermented garlic and I am behind on elderberry, oh, um, yeah. elderberry syrup. Mm-hmm. So I've got to get on that chip, chop, chip, look at split. That is always good to have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, to get on topic before we get into, so we had said our, our title is getting off the food system, meat and dairy. And, um, in thinking about that and prepping before, you know, kind of sitting down and recording this episode, I looked at the past titles of podcasts that we've done. Again, it's hard to believe we're in season seven now, but you know, we've done, it looked like what, four episodes relating to basically, you know, calling meat, calling animals for meat and so on. We had a three-parter. We talked about rabbits, chickens, and quail. And then we had one just kind of general on butchering day. And so just to start out, what what is our focus this time? Well, even though we have talked about those, those specific animals, quail, chicken, um, we've talked about that, um, rabbit, but... What we really want to hone in on for this season is not the technicality of how to raise those particular animals. What we really want to hone in on is how as homesteaders, we get, uh, uh, we start breaking ourselves from the grocery store systems. It's really talking about changing our mindset instead of thinking, you know, I have to rely on what is given to me in a grocery store. Instead, we're relying on what you produce yourself. As homesteaders, we've fallen into this ourselves um, in times past, um, where we, even though we're producing food, we still, well, I'm just going to go to the store and I, I just want chicken wings. (laughs) I just want chicken wings. And, um, you know, there's only two pairs of wings that come with a chicken. Okay. So how many wings are you going to eat? If you eat eight chicken wings, that's, you know, four birds that you had to butcher to get those eight wings. So really kind of changing our mindset trying to get ourselves off of, well, I'm just going to go to the store for insert here, meat or dairy products and try to work with what you're producing on property. So could I, could I, could we sum it up? We're, we're talking less about the how, but the why. We are going to get into some of the how, because we're going to be introducing other animals this season. Um, We have, like you said, we have talked about chicken, you know, rabbits and, and so forth and quail, but we're introducing some different animals this time around goats, pigs, and we possibly are going to be talking about beef. Um, but so we are going to, when we have those interviews, we are going to be talking about a little bit more technicality. However, Um, It's less about the technicality this season and more about just really, how do you change your mindset? How do you get yourself off of the training that we've all been given for those of us that are all the same, you know, generation. And when I say the same generation, I'm talking about anybody who's been born you know, after 1940, let's say, you know, we're, we're just going to lump everybody into a generation, you know, after the 1940s, we, we've all been kind of trained on this whole, 
I need food. I have to go to the grocery store. And even as a homesteader, even experienced homesteaders, it's hard to get yourself to think, no, I'm not going to use the grocery store. I'm going to use what I have here on my property. I'm going to use the entire animal. I'm going to learn how to make whatever it is that you're going to make if you're going to make sausage um, and learn how to substitute al- alternative meats. For example, not everybody has access to beef. Um, we don't produce beef here on our property. We just don't have, we're two acres if you haven't guessed by the name. <laughs> It's not just the name. (laughs) It's not just the name. We really are on two acres. But um, we don't have enough room for beef cattle. However, what we do is we source our beef local here to our area. Um, It's within a 50 50 miles from us. Um, And that particular farmer raises their beef the way we would if we could. Um, and you know, when they butcher, they don't spray it down with chemicals, you know, chlorine and, and all that other junk that you don't need. Um, and so, and the beef is just excellent. Yeah. We mentioned this before it's grass fed and grass finished Mm -hmm. and you can tell the difference and we've had family visit and they can tell tell the difference. difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the point is, is that not everybody has access to that. If you're trying to produce something on your property, you may be like us where you can't produce beef, but do you have goats? I know of homesteaders who have opted to raise not just dairy goats, but meat goats as well. Um, So is that a possibility for you on your homestead? We know people, we, in our personal lives who, you know, they, again, using beef as an example, they hunt for venison. Um, Unfortunately here in the state of Arizona, well, you know more about that than I do, but. Yeah, Yeah, it's, yeah, there's a lottery and you're not going to get picked every year. So, but you know, we know some in the Midwest, let's just say. That, and in the South. And in mm-hmm. the South that, you know, if, for example, if it's on your property, there you go. You know, you can take it out. You don't need a, I think if I remember correctly, you don't need a license. But um, anyway, it's more plentiful. So, yes. Um, irony, a bit of irony is that we have deer running around. We almost, you almost ran, you and the kids almost yeah. ran into a deer. Yeah, we have deer three, around three here. Yeah. yeah. We have deer around here, but there's absolutely nothing you can do. So, yeah. yeah. Now let me just ask the question. We've, I was just thinking while you were speaking that I think it's going on about nine years now that we've been raising chickens for meat. Mm-hmm. I think it was 2015. If I remember correctly, we started smaller we earned our stripes, so to speak. We, we learned did. how to defeather them by hand mm-hmm. and hang them from the from the covered porch, and you know. Um, so the, oh, we've yes, you know, changed our kind of um, <laughs> gone a little more professional. Let's just say, like a little bit more organized and funny and true story. But, before you ask oh, okay. your question, uh-huh. one. I think it was the second year that we were learning how to process our own meat chickens. It was like two days before Christmas and we were processing, I think we were processing like 10 meat birds, 10 or 15. I think it was 15 now that I think about it. Cause we were oh, doing it by hand. We, I mean, we were plucking by hand. We were doing everything. And like you said, I mean, on our patio, you can imagine this is in suburbia mm-hmm. on our patio. We had these nooses and we were hanging you know, 8, the chickens. square foot uh, yeah. property. I think we were was. hanging the chickens upside down, mm-hmm. defeathering them, plucking them. And our next door neighbor comes knocking on the door and I heard it and opened up 
you know, had to like go run around the side of the house. She had baked a bunch of Christmas cookies for us. And I ran across the side of the house and I was like, oh, hi, Linda. Her name was Linda. And I was like, oh, hi, Linda. And she's like, oh, I, I baked these for you. And then she looked at me and I looked down and my boots were covered in blood and feathers. And she looked at me, she goes, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Yeah. We're and your just... reply was, you should have seen the one that got away. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, we're perfectly fine. We're just processing chickens right now. And she just looks at me like, oh, oh I'll be back at my house. Yeah. And she gave yeah. me the, the thing of cookies. And she's like, um, you know, you can hold on to the plate when you're done. You, you can give it to me. And she promptly walked away. And it was hysterically funny. Anyway true story (laughs) we earned our stripes right but so that's funny so i guess a question is because there are probably listeners out there that they're not processing animals for meat they're not use they're not uh raising animals for dairy Mm -hmm. which is what we're going to be talking about and the question may come up is well why i can just go to the grocery store. It's easy, right? Yes. We've heard this before. Yeah. Why? Because well, we've been doing this for nine years. Maybe just to kind of get that idea rolling, what for you started it. And as we've done this over the years, things that maybe have added to that, the why for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you looking to build a homestead from the ground up? Or maybe you're looking to build an off-grid dream home, a vacation home, or maybe just a piece of land to call your own. Visit yourcheapland.com to buy rural land in the wide open spaces of southwestern United States. When you visit yourcheapland.com, they're here to help you. And with their help, you can do this. You can take your dream of owning land and make it a reality. Most down payments are only $294, including the document fee. Remember, everyone qualifies for financing at yourcheapland.com. Head on over to yourcheapland.com and start making those dreams come true. And now, back to our podcast. I think it's really not just me. I think it's both of us, but I think the why for us was very simple. It had to do with health. Um, and then, you know, when we had our, our eldest son, the pedal kind of went to the metal at that point. It, it's funny when I, when I talk about that chicken story, um, with the next door neighbor, we had not had our eldest son just yet. Um, yeah, it would be a couple years later, I think about three years later, we, we had our, our oldest son after that. And it really, the, the pedal really got to the metal with him because he was a hot mess. Um, he, you had already had dairy problems. Um, you were quote unquote lactose intolerant. Really, you were processed milk intolerant. Um, and that is something that we're going to talk about further in one of the upcoming episodes of the season is about dairy and, um, and why dairy is such, it's such a topic. It's such a topic. It, it's a topic that needs to be teased out, talked about, discussed in depth. And we are going to have that in depth conversation and, about and dairy. Just to say it briefly, but, I, I learned, I've learned a lot. Right. And our oldest son is also lactose intolerant. Fortunately, you know, I was able to work with his little microbiome and get him 
you know, settled. So he's not as sensitive to processed milk, but you know, he can still, he can still lapse. And so dairy became a very hot issue in our family. And it is something even just as we speak right now, I just made another block of cheese um, today, um, a hard cheese, and I've got some ricotta waiting for me on the stove right now when we're done recording. And these are, but, and they won't bother us like mm-hmm. we would buy in the store, the, the same stuff we would buy in the store. Exactly, yep. exactly. And as time has gone on, I've also now manifested a lactose intolerance. Um, I'm very lactose intolerant, as a matter of fact. But, um, you know, there's just, there are things that are being put in our foods, in the food that we eat, that's not healthy. And how they're and, raised. Because yeah. I know early on in this, pro- this process for us, cause just to kind of add to, you're right, it's for both of us. We did some research on seeing how chickens and pigs and so on were actually raised, not raised mm-hmm. well, and then how they're processed not well. So when you think about it, you're eating for us anyway, you're eating animals that are sick and they try to make up for it and they're not treated well. And, you know, not to be environmentalists and whatnot, but just from the aspect of they're sick animals Mm -hmm. and then they're pumped with these things, you know, antibiotics and all this other stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel? And I know for myself, I know you've said it too, you can tell a difference. It's the taste and it's the lack of feeling, you know, like junk after you eat it. Right. There are some foods I know like you and I just recently, um, you know, we we were on vacation um, over the uh, Christmas season and um we went on vacation and we went out to eat and you and I went out on a date night and I thought I had ordered quote unquote healthier, had a salad and just, you know, a little piece of meat. And I walked out of that restaurant feeling like I was eight months pregnant. I mean, I really felt like I was eight months pregnant. I I just was like, should I start waddling? (laughs) You know, and it's because there is just so much junk that's being put in the food. You go out to a restaurant, you go, um, you go to the store, you get yourself a salad. You think, okay, you know what? I'm eating greens. You know, I'm one who believes in eating vegetables. I think vegetables, the Israel, if it worked for the Israelites, it is it should work for us. That's my take on it. Okay. The whole story of Daniel, um, you know, he ate vegetables. Anyway, I digress. But um, because I know there's some people who are like, no, we should be more meat centric. But actually, when you read your Bible, you'll find out that the Israelites ate more vegetables and grains, and a little bit meat because meat was costly. Um, but anyway, I digress. So the point is, is that you go to the store, you get your salad, you're getting good, fresh vegetables, right? And then here comes your salad dressing. The fresh vegetables might be organic. They might've been grown. Well, maybe you grew them yourself. I don't know, but then you go and you put your salad dressing on there. And if you flip that salad dressing over, And you see all the ingredients that are in there. Yeah. Even if you're eating healthy, good stuff, fresh vegetables, good meat. But if you're putting the wrong condiments on them, it's going to make you not feel good. So it's really all about getting ourselves out of this cycle. We buy, people go to the store, they buy meat that is from an animal that has been pumped with all sorts of 
antibiotics, vitamins, blah, blah, blah. God knows what is being pumped into those animals. To make up for the fact that they've been raised in a way that they're going to be That's inhumane. Unhealthy. Exactly. So, you, ex- you, you know, it's, it's that whole adage of garbage in, garbage out. Mm-hmm. You're, you are what you eat. I mean, that, that is, that statement is not just something that people say, oh, you are what you eat. You know, it, it's, it's truth. If you're eating an animal that's been pumped with antibiotics, that's been, you know, bleached and, and, and all of these things, are you really expecting to eat this particular piece of meat and be healthy? No. And the whole hamster wheel has led people to say, oh, well, I'm just going to get this $5 roasted chicken that is unhealthy when you really look at it. Mm -hmm. And it's okay because it costs less. Mm-hmm. Right. Because this is not about, well, we can raise it for 40%. Le- that's not, you know, that's not the only thing to look at. Sometimes these things cost more. Well, when you think, when, when you look at equipment or feed and and whatnot, but let, let me say this, you were, we're trained, society trains us, at least in this country to buy a cheaper, you know, I'm going to use that $5 rotisserie chicken. They're losing money on it to get you to buy other stuff in that place Mm -hmm. and it's raised unhealthy and you're eating that. But let me just say this. If you were to spend $2 more for that bird and it was healthier, is that not better for you than buy the cheaper bird that is unhealthy? And now you're making up for it by what buying vitamins that probably don't work and so on. So that's the training. Exactly. So th- there's that mentality of, well, it's cheaper to, yeah, but stop. It's, there's more to it than just that. Right. Because if you're, if you're wanting to get that cheap meat, let's just call a spade a spade. You're going to pay for it in the end. Mm-hmm. Literally. <laughs> okay. It wasn't going to go there. Well, sometimes <laughs> that's true, you know, <laughs> gotta be real. <laughs> okay. E- okay. Eventually, it's going to catch up with you because then what happens is, is then you get put on the other system of pharmaceuticals and it just becomes this vicious cycle that you can't seem to break out of. So what we really want to focus on is taking some baby steps, you know, especially for those of us who are homesteaders, we're already doing it, whether you're doing it in suburbia because you can. And if you don't think that you can raise your own meat and you are in suburbia, go back and listen to those episodes that you referenced. It was their episodes that we talked about raising um, meat rabbits, raising chicken, raising quail, quail, is it worth it? Um, Go back and listen to those episodes because we get in those episodes, we talk very technical very specific about those particular type of animals that you can raise on a small suburban homestead. But this time around, we are going to be focusing a little bit more on the bigger animals. Um, But the point is, is whether, you know, if you are homesteading, you know, whether it's in suburbia or whether you're on acreage, you're already producing said meat you need to, we need to start changing our mindsets to say, I am producing this meat. I've worked hard for this. I don't need the extra insert here. I don't need those extra chicken wings. I don't need to go to the store for those chicken wings. I can do something else. Um, We really need to start changing our mindset to, to break free of the grocery store system, the system that exists for most of us, um, most of you who are probably listening to this, you were born sometime after 1940. I hone in on 1940 because that's when the first grocery stores, at least here in the United States, started. So most of us are born after that. So that is what our training has been. So mm-hmm. we and, really want to break that cycle. And just to mention those episodes that we were mentioning it's season two, episode four, five, and six. And to make it easy, I'll put the links for those uh, in the show notes for this episode. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. That's much appreciated. Well, that's pretty much it for what we have on 
the menu today. Um, so stay tuned for, like we said, for this season, we're going to be taking a deep dive into breaking free of the, that grocery store system. Sounds good. We look forward to uh, continuing this season with this topic. And uh, we thank you again for your support. Yes. Fed loyal listeners. Um, some of you have even written in. Um, since the beginning. Since the beginning. Yeah. And so feel free to, again, in the show notes, feel free to uh, contact Lisa. I'll have her, you know, she'll continue to field questions and mm -hmm. feedback and so on. So that'll be in the show notes as well. And then be sure to visit our website, the two acre homestead.com. Yes. And, and be sure to visit the website because some of these episodes are going to be on the website as far as downloadables are concerned, where it will, will have some step-by-step -step guides on things that you can follow. So we'll let you know as each episode unfolds. Sounds good. So from all of us here on our homestead, to all of you, wherever you are in the world, happy homesteading. Stay safe.